Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question, which Jeff is, you must build a boat. Possibly one of the more amusingly titled games this year. It comes from 88 Games. They are the developers of 10 million. Remember that one? A couple of years ago, I looked at 10 million. It was extremely popular on iOS, like very, very successful. Not so much on PC, but along comes its sequel which goes by the name of You Must Build a Boat, which I suppose is a better title than 10 million. It's certainly more descriptive and a hell of a lot easier to put into a bloody search engine. Let me put it that way. So what's it all about? It's a real-time match three with progression. I'll have a quick look at the settings menu because there's not much to really look at here. It is a 2D game with pixel art, so you don't really expect too much. There's one thing that's missing from this, and that is constraint to window. Yeah, my mouse is disappearing from the side there. I like to play games like this in a window because the larger the board is, the harder it tends to be for me to actually keep an eye on all of it at the same time. So I like to play in a window at a lower resolution than what my monitor actually runs at. It's, you know, it's a 27-inch monitor. It's pretty big. So if the board is to the edge of the screen, it's more difficult to get matches. But there's no constraint to window, meaning you can very easily slip out of the game that way. That... It's something you could definitely do with fixing. Outside of that, you've got your sound, and that really is about it. It's completely mouse-driven, so there's really not a great deal missing here. It would be nice to have in-game mouse sensitivity, but you could just alter it with either your mouse or the window sensitivity anyway. So, let's dive in. This is a few hours into the game. I played some of this on iOS as well since it came out quite recently. All right, welcome to my boat. It doesn't even have any bloody sails yet, so we're not doing that well. It apparently manages to make its way along the river by everybody jumping at the same time. I believe this is a violation of physics and frankly should be a black mark against this title, a black mark indeed. So this boat is full of vendors. This should remind you of 10 million because you were building up a kind of tower which had rooms that were locked off until you were able to rebuild them. Kind of similar when you achieve milestones in the game, people come and live on your boat. So there's the gym guy right here, or gym woman. I'm not actually sure what the gender is. I mean, it is pixel art. It's hard to say. So I apologize if I have just erased somebody there, but whatever the case, it is a gym which allows you to unlock monsters, which can live on your boat. And when you unlock the monsters, they will give you passive bonuses when you go into the dungeon. And you can also get an item which will summon all the monsters to come and attack in kind of a limit break style thing. This is a kind of armorer who can upgrade my armor, as you might imagine. I've got to do that right now by spending some gold. you got to click a bunch of times to make this happen. I'm really not sure why they put that in. It's kind of irritating. And it, as you'll see, that's upgraded the shield tiles which are available in this match three game. This guy right here tells me a little bit about the various modifiers and all sorts of things like that and the various monsters. There you go. And that's that's the horn there that summons the monsters. If I go down here, I can upgrade my staff. If I go down here, I can upgrade my sword and so on and so forth. And this area right here allows me to sell trash in order to gain money. The main meat of the game, of course, is to go into the dungeon and upgrade your boat. So very, very similar to 10 million because that's exactly the same as what 10 million asked you to do. But there are a couple of more subtle differences in design. For instance, you can add quests which make the run harder. So if I add a quest here, it adds some modifiers to the dungeon, it increases the danger, but also the quality level of the dungeon. And adding the quests allows you to progress to the next area. But if you want an easier run, maybe you're having a really hard time in the dungeon, you need some upgrades, do an easier run without any quests, earn some money, build up, and then eventually get what you need to do. Because, frankly, you can't lose in this game, really. Even when you lose, you win. That's that's the strange thing about it. So, into the dungeon we go. Now, I was talking about real-time match three. Like I said, if you play 10 million, this should be immediately familiar to you. There are a few changes in terms of the tiles that are available, but for the most part, it's the same. In other words, match up the swords in order to attack with your sword, match up the staffs to attack with your magical staff, match up the keys to unlock the chests, something like that. There we go, and we're kind of missing some keys on the board, so I'm just going to quickly spam to get it. There we go. And try and fight your way through. Every time you get hit, you get knocked backwards. Once you got knocked off the screen, that is the end of the run. That's not you losing the run, because you can't lose in this game. It's the end of the run, you just have to go and do it again, basically. So, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a particularly punishing game. It allows you to beat it simply through playing the game over and over and over again. Which I suppose is appealing to some people. And... The better you play, the quicker you're going to beat it, and of course the quicker you unlock stuff, but really you will eventually get everything. 
as long as you spend enough time doing it. Uh, try to unlock the strap quick. No, did I get it? Maybe I got it. Okay. So there's a couple of different features to the dungeon. Every time you get through a stage, it now adds a random modifier, which increases the quality level of the stuff that you get, but also increases the danger. So in this case, they've added another nasty negative modifier to the dungeon. So I've got to watch out for that, and things are going to get a little bit more unpleasant as a direct result there. You can also cast spells which will appear on the board if you match up a bunch of crates. There's an unlock chance for those. Uh, I want to get rid of that, and I'm not fast enough. I'm never fast enough for games like this, I've got to say. The real-time matching is somewhat hectic, to say the least. There you go, I have one of those. There you go, that's, that's a bit better. That's what we like to see. A couple of changes on the board this time around. You don't match wood and stone and things like that. You match, like, might and intelligence, which allow you to unlock things in the monster gym. But, I mean, that's effectively exactly the same thing, uh, with the exception of the fact that it unlocks monsters as opposed to unlocking the different vendors. The vendors are unlocked by running far enough in through the dungeon. Oh, killing this is going to be difficult. This is one of the sort of tougher monsters I might actually end up losing here. But you're going to lose. Like, you're eventually going to lose. It doesn't matter, because it said you win anyway. As long as you accomplish a quest, even if you don't accomplish a quest, you're going to gain something. You're going to gain something from all of this. You're going to gain cash, you're going to gain unlocks and things like that. So I've unlocked this, and that looks like that's going to give me another vendor. Not really sure what this vendor actually does, but it looks like they... It looks like it buffs up the spells that you use. Okay, fair enough. That's useful. So, are you noticing the similarities to 10 million yet? I said you should be because all the differences are really rather subtle. And if you didn't like 10 million, I don't think this game is going to fix that. Because it is essentially the same thing with some modifications. And there we go, our boat's now slightly bigger. Looks slightly prettier, not by much. You know, I'm still not a huge fan of the art style, but... It looks a little bit prettier, it's got a little bit more variety in terms of the match 3, but the match 3 is for the most part the same, it's a real-time match 3. There are some minor quality of life changes, for instance, you can continue to move tiles after you've matched something, you don't have to wait for those tiles to disappear. Although that does point out a fairly, I don't know what I call it, a large problem? It's, I, I believe it is a bit of an issue with the game, to some degree. You'll notice that during that run I was sort of spamming a little bit. Well. If you're quick enough, you can more often than not beat the early levels and in fact just like do something in the dungeon by just randomly moving the columns and rows around as fast as you possibly can. This is something that my wife pointed out when she when she basically beat 10 million on iOS. She really just did it solely by spamming. She realized it's actually quicker and more effective more often than not, unless you're a very good match 3 guy to just very, very quickly move the tiles around and just match as much stuff as humanly possible. It's often just better to do that. This is especially true when you're unlocking a bunch of items on the board through the, through the chest system, simply because the more of these you match, the more items you'll eventually get on the board and the more powerful your board will become. So it's often better just to do that. And you see, I mean, I'm just kind of mashing away here. And sometimes it's effective, sometimes it's not. I'm not all that great at match three games, which is maybe why this method is a little bit more effective to me than it would be to other people. But I do think it is a bit of a flaw in the game, and I think you could have fixed it. And the way that you could have fixed it is by having a penalty for a mismatch. This is one of those rare match three games where there's absolutely no penalty whatsoever for not matching correctly. So if I just do this quite a bit, more often than not, I'll actually get quite a lot of matches. Sometimes it'll stop, you know, just because it just happens to not be set up that way, but you know, I'm getting a decent number of matches here at a reasonable pace without too much of a problem. And there really is no penalty for me playing that way, outside of the fact that it bloody hurts. It gives me bloody RSI, honestly. But, you know, it looks like I'm matching a hell of a lot faster than I really am. I think if you're really good at match three, that becomes kind of irrelevant because you'll be able to spot the stuff way faster than I can. But I'm not that good at match three, so I think maybe that that's probably why this is an effective way of doing this. I'm actually really not paying that much attention. Although I imagine that I'm catching quite a bit, bit of it in my peripheral vision here as well. So there might be something to do with that. Maybe I'm not spamming as much as I think I am. Maybe it's just becoming uh, an issue of reaction time and uh, peripheral vision more so than legitimately spamming at random. 
I do think that is a flaw in the game design. That's not something that they really fixed this time around. I do, although, I, you know, I've got to give them props for making the dungeon running a little bit more interesting. That whole limit break idea of, hey, you unlock monsters and they come and help you when this little yellow horn bar to the side goes up to maximum. That's not too shabby. There's a little bit more going on on the board. You know, spell management and things like that becomes an issue. And all of these random modifiers do make the fact that you're doing exactly the same thing over and over again. Just a little bit more interesting than it was previously. And let's be honest, the meat of the game is the match three and running these so-called infinite dungeons. Although you will obviously eventually lose in each dungeon because it just simply becomes too strong to, for you to actually beat. There we go. I'm really sort of just spamming now, but I'm getting a good amount of matches and I'm actually doing okay as a result of the spam. So, hey, why not? You get these little breaks between monsters anyway, which allow you to maybe look for combos and set things up for next time around instead of just randomly spamming things. But oh, it, it, it's, a, it's a fairly effective way to play the game for the most part there. And like I said, there, there's no way to lose. So it doesn't really matter if you're inefficient. It just means that you're going to end up having to run the same dungeon more times than you otherwise would if you were better at the game. You could view that as a fault. And you could view this, the overt similarity to the original game as a fault. You know, it is an iterative game. There's no real doubt about that. But I would be lying if I said there weren't improvements. And honestly, the, the, it's a, kind of attractive in terms of theme. I mean, I love the little idea of building a boat and modifying it and getting new little bits as you go along. It is really quite amusing and it, it's a little it's got a little bit more character to it than 10 million did, which was you alone in a sodding rotting tower, which really wasn't that fun. But there we go. Hey. We didn't manage these, but we got a bunch of stuff. So if I return home, I've got more cash and this is you know, this is the game loop. This is the gameplay loop over and over and over and over and over again. And I mean there's not really much else to say about it really. This is how the game is going to play. That's just how it's gonna be. And eventually you'll just unlock more and more and more stuff. Some people really dig it. And I imagine on iOS in particular, where you're flooded with match three games, having something that's a little bit different is always nice. And most match threes are not real time. So this one is arguably more challenging than most. So it becomes maybe less of a puzzle game and more of a speed and reaction game, more so than anything else. And yeah, you know, it's, it's a good enough sequel, but it, it really doesn't do that much to reinvent the formula. I wonder if it had to, though. And in fact, I wonder if people would have been upset if it had tried to reinvent the wheel. I, a lot of people really like 10 million, especially on iOS. And I kind of liked it as well when I played it, although it is highly repetitive. There's no real doubt about that. So you can make the argument that messing too much with a thing that works is not a very good idea. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just make it more compelling, try and fix some of the progression issues, make it a little bit less repetitive. And they did succeed to some degree in doing that, but the changes are certainly minor. <clears throat> They're more often than not subtle. They do make a difference. But they are not going to convince anyone that didn't like 10 million that you must build a boat is somehow worthy of their time now. Because mechanically this game is almost identical. They've just tacked a bunch of other stuff onto it and made some minor subtle changes here and there. The gameplay loop is the same and it is very much a loop. It is highly repetitive. There's, there's no real strategy involved in anything else other than the match 3 element. So if you don't enjoy this real time match 3... Don't even bother. I mean, you know, that, that's just the honest appraisal. Don't even bother. It's like saying to someone that doesn't like FPS, well, go play this FPS. Well, does it have shooting in it? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't like shooting. Okay, then. Well, you're probably not going to enjoy that then. A similar issue here. If you don't like matching three, then you're not going to enjoy this one either. But it's a solid match three game in and of its own right. And uh, if 10 million didn't exist, this would be one of the most original match three games on the market. As it stands, 10 million does exist, and you can clearly see how iterative this is. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, and those that were fans of 10 million that were wanting a little bit more of the same with some changes, you're gonna find it here. And it's not an expensive game either. It is less than $5 right now on Steam. So that, I think, is a, a strong endorsement when you just say, look, it, it barely costs anything. You know, if you if you want a little real-time match three game that is certainly compelling and you do dig the progression, a lot of people really do. A lot of people love to actually gain something at the end of everything they do, which you do, e even if you lose. And of course you can't lose. You will gain something. Hey, I gained material. Now I can go and talk to the gym leader. I might be able to unlock a new monster for my boat. Can I get a new monster? Yes, I can. I can unlock something from the immovable tribe. And you get set bonuses. 2% damage resistance. There, I got something new. Every single time you beat the dungeon, or lose to the dungeon, or win, as you always do, you gain something extra. 
So there's always that treadmill that you're getting one step forward, one step forward. A lot of people are very, very compelled by that. Personally, not so much for me. You know, I, I love to indulge in mechanically in-depth games, and I am less concerned about progression. But if you do like the progression, then yeah, I can see absolutely why you would dig You Must Build a Boat. I, I, I'm pretty much done with it. I think I've had my fill. I don't expect myself to play any more of it, but I wasn't too big into 10 million either. And this game has not convinced me that the formula has suddenly changed radically in a way that would have me playing for dozens and dozens of hours. But for a lot of people, this is enough to play for dozens and dozens of hours. There's a reason why 10 million was as popular as it was on iOS. There's a reason why You Must Build a Boat is probably going to do pretty damn well too. And it's not wrong that it's doing well. It's just, it's not for me. I prefer perhaps the match three games with the, uh, it was just more time to think. I mean, I loved Ironcast, as you're probably well aware, although that used the match three system in a way that was a little bit different. And it did innovate in that respect, whereas this is just, hey, it's uh, the, well, it's the same as what you saw in 10 million, right? Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, as I said. If that's what you want, have a look at it. It's called You Must Build a Boat. It's on iOS. It's on Steam. It's less than $5 on launch, so it's not exactly a pricey investment. And the PC port is fine. You know, it runs at 60 frames per second. Mouse control is absolutely fine. The only problem I've got is the lack of confinement to window. Everything else is exactly what I would expect from it. No real problems whatsoever. You must build a boat, ladies and gentlemen. Available on Steam as well as iOS for less than $5 or your regional equivalent with the launch price there. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.